Hello drone racers, I'm just giddy because the Wizard X220S is here. I did not expect it for another week. I'm so excited. This is the full RTF version that comes with a controller. This is my first FlySky controller. So let's get it out of the box and see what's inside. This box is packed to the gills. There are blades that are literally in Ziploc bags. I think this is a first production run where they haven't even finalized everything yet. So what are these blades? There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but these are 5051 blades. Those are aggressive blades. So there's a couple packs in here. There's a bunch of them, which is nice. These feel pretty stiff, so I'm guessing they're going to be a, kind of brittle. We'll find out later, I guess. The RTF version does come with a charger and a battery and an adapter. So no matter where you are, you can probably get connected and charging. Speaking of the charger, it looks like there's a two-piece charger here. It is a USAC outlet. And then there is a charger for a 4S battery, which is what it comes with. It's a 4S 75C 1500 milliamp. I'll say this seems a little small for a 1500. I don't have one in the room with me, but it seems a pretty compact for a 4S 1500, but it seems pretty nice. So we'll see how that does. Typical XT60, thank goodness. This is a huge extra thought for this. It comes with the GoPro mount. So it's a or a run cam three mount or a fox ear cube mount either one ready to go right on the front and i expected this to be 3d printed but it's not it's actually full molded it seems to have a nice elasticity to it and it seems like it'll be really nice it's it's a really nice extra thought because these can cost eight to fifteen dollars you can print one on your own sure but one you're going to print on your own isn't going to look this nice so i like that here's the radio this is part of the reason i bought the rtf version this is the IRX 6X or i6X. So it's an iRange radio. It's a FlySky radio. No illusions. It's a it's a FlySky type radio. It uses AF HDS2. And so what I really like about this is it's an i6, but this will do up to 10 channels depending on the receiver, which is huge. I don't always like the i6 because I don't think six channels is enough for the long term. So I like that this comes with what could be a permanent radio for you. It's really nice. It has a nice feel to it. It's a little skinnier than what I'm used to. I have to get used to these switches, but it has probably everything you'll need. The screen looks like it's kind of dinged up, but it's really not. There's just a screen protector on here. So if that looks bad on camera, there we go. Nice and shiny. This will take four AA batteries, which will be just fine. It does have a trainer port. I don't know much about this. This is my first fly sky, as I mentioned. So I'm really excited to be able to have one to use another protocol option. Now the drone itself, lots of bags, lots of baggies in here. So we have zip ties, which are for connecting the GoPro holder. That's good. We have mounts. Uh, so these are supposed to be landing pads that you put on the bottom. So when you land, you land on these and are more cushioned. I've never used them before, but it's a good idea. But these are interesting. Huh? These are carbon fiber wrenches for attaching your prop nuts. I have never heard of such a thing. They're really thick and hopefully they work out pretty well. I'm afraid they'll splinter and I don't know how well that'll work, but it's interesting. Four prop nuts in two different colors. Lots of, I'm assuming extra screws. And then the Pagoda antenna. So this is a huge upgrade over the Ishin Wizard X220. One, because it comes with a really good antenna versus one you need to replace immediately, or theoretically, it's a right-hand polarized. It tells us right on there. So it should be good. It has a, it bends nicely, so it should survive well. And then we have the drone itself, which at a glance looks to be really, really well put together. These are Ishin brand 2206-2300KV motors. There's an all-in-one ESC, so there's no ESC on the arms. Makes these a little bit thinner, but they're nice and thick. That should be four millimeter carbon fiber there. And painted purple on the side, nice little extra touch. I like that they bound the wires. That makes it look really, really nice and clean. Receivers already installed, should be bound. We'll check all the screws to make sure they are all down tight before we do anything else. It's kind of interesting, there's both LEDs on the back and the bottom of the quadcopter. So when you're going along pretty level, you'll be able to see it there. But when you're racing at full tilt, you'll be able to see the ones from underneath. So that's kind of an interesting design. I've not seen one with both of them. We'll definitely want to put those foam mounts on here though, because we do have exposed wires on the bottom because of that. And I'm not sure I really like that. Sometimes I might be landing in wet grass or whatnot and uh, exposed wires on the bottom is a bad thing for that. Another thing I just noticed is these are already soft mounted. They soft mounted these motors. That's pretty awesome because I found that makes a humongous difference in multiple locations. So 
That's really impressive. I hope that makes this a really smooth flyer right out of the box. I'm not sure exactly how useful it is, but they've etched on the side the angles for the camera so you can get an idea. Okay, I want a 30 degree tilt. That's there. I want to go all the way up to 60. It looks like I can't quite get to 60, but almost. And then it marks 90, even though that's not going to happen. Not with the plate the way it is on top. On this side, it is nice to have it exposed. We have an SD card for your black box and then a covered USB port. The uh, cover, I'm sure I will lose after about five seconds. We'll have an exposed USB port, but still we're used to things being exposed on these. It's not like that's a big deal. It is kind of a nice touch to have a uh, cover for it though. And I dropped it and I already lost the cover. It's nice the VTX is extended and mounted to the frame. The top frame is a little thin, but I think it'll probably be strong enough. And there is a rubber grommet in here, making sure there's no contact, which is nice. And then the batteries go in here. And these are a removable rubber grommet, once I get the antenna out of the way. It looks like this will be able to slide on and off, which would be nice in a uh, hard crash scenario, but it should make sure nothing gets ripped apart because there is an omnibus F4 inside of this thing. So it's definitely not a perfect quad. There are a few cons. A lot of people don't like having these sides on it. Theoretically, you want the airflow to be able to flow on here. But I noticed on the box, all the props are reversed. And I'm wondering if it's actually set up for reversed props, which would be really interesting because to a lot of people, this is a better design. It keeps things away from the camera. Everything flows better. So it'll be interesting to see if they actually did program things to have the props on or if the picture's just wrong. It is set up so you can see what channel you're on, and there are a ton of channels. It's a 72 channel transmitter. Make sure you check your local laws for which bands you can use because most people can't use all of those. Problem is, it's under here, under this Velcro that I can't see it. I can't get to it. That's, that's not gonna work. I have to pull this strap out in order to actually see the or change the channel. And this doesn't move easy and if I get to take this out I don't think I'd ever be able to put it back without taking the top plate off so that seems to be a major design flaw I basically can't change my VTX channel without taking off the top plate now I didn't have a first wizard I don't know if that's the case on that one too maybe I can do it in programming that would be nice if, if I can control it through the programming somehow. But I don't know because that's another thing. It didn't come with a manual, which is kind of shocking for me. Ishin has been so good with their manuals. The Lizard manual is great. The Aurora 68 manual is great. And I got nothing with this. I, I almost think they just forgot mine. Surely this thing comes with an excellent manual to show you exactly how to get your radio all set up, get everything connected and going and change your VTX. I have batteries in the radio and have it on. I don't know if it's bound yet or not. I'm getting ready to connect the battery and realized I had not connected an antenna. Very, very important to make sure you connect an antenna before you connect the battery because as soon as you start transmitting, you could fry things if you don't have an antenna connected. Just to point out, it is RPSMA, which is my preference. Okay, hopefully this is not super loud. Okay, it does not appear that the radio is bound, so I planned on checking all of this in beta flight before doing any flights anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my computer and do that now just to get the radio going. Okay, so let's see what beta flight says. Means we know we're level, that's good. Ports, so you, that's a lot of UARTs. Okay, so I'm not used to F4s. This one's kind of new for me, 3% load. D-Shot 600's motor stop, so at least they did set things up to be ready to fly. That's good to know. We are set for S-Bus. 8,000, 2,000 can probably turn that up. LED strip, black box, SD card, OSD. So at least we should be set up. It's probably a matter of it doesn't work because we're not bound. That would be my guess. I'm pretty sure those are default PIDs. I don't look at this quite enough. Uh, I would probably turn the super rate up, but for now I'm just going to leave it just so that's the way that they've got it. ATR, my instincts tell me to change that, but I know this is right for this one. Spent too much time with free skies. So this is probably part of our problem. We do not have an arm switch. We have an angle switch, and that is it. Probably going to have to fix that. We'll hook up the radio in just a minute. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off artificial horizon and horizon sidebars because those don't work. Maybe in an updated version, they'll fix that. But for now, let's see what version we've got on here. Oh, 
at least it's pretty up to date. Is that the latest? 317? Yeah, so as of today, that's actually the latest version for this board. So that's really good to know that they do have it very up to date. I don't have to go through that process right now. So it seems everything's all set up and good to go, except for either the radio's not bound or it's just because there's no arm switch. So let's see now. Okay, so the radio is even bound. They did take care of that. That's nice. It's probably just a matter of setting up modes. These switches don't seem to do anything. I'm probably going to have to go into the radio. There are probably people mocking me right now because I don't know what I'm doing, but I've never had one of these, so I'm probably going to have to set these switches up to do something. While I do that, I'm going to unplug the battery and figure that out. Okay, while I am here, I did find the channels and all... The failsafe is set to off, which I think is probably what we want here. That's on the re receiver setup, so I'll check that before I fly it for sure. Okay, so this one will probably help someone. The switches are not enabled by default on this radio, so you have to do a long press and go to the systems menu, go all the way to the bottom to aux switches, and then you have to turn on my switch A and switch C, which is the switches I want to use, were not turned on. You do up to turn them on, and then you do go through the ones that you want, turn that one on, and then you do a long press of the cancel, and it will beep at you differently, and then you know it went in and worked. So then you can go in to the systems menu, set up my aux channels, and now hopefully it will do switch A, yay! And I want that on switch C, so that way it'll be my arm mode and then my my uh, well my arming switch and my mode switch for the three different modes that I want there and I'll do a long hold for cancel the same thing there and my radio setup now it should work let's try that again there we go so now I have that now I have aux 1 and I have aux 2 which is enough I'm gonna have to figure out how to get the additional channels working on this see if it's possible with this receiver because I really do want another switch for my buzzer so now I'm going to set arm to be switch one and it's going to be down so that's there and then my angle mode I'll set to switch two I'll set angle here I want horizon right in the middle there I want air mode there and here I would really like to have my beeper to be able to turn on but I can't do that right now so there we go so there we're saved throttle down we're armed, and it's interesting. Motor stop is on, but the motors are turning on. Did, wasn't motor stop on? Yeah, motor stop is enabled. But when I turn it on, I still get throttle. Then we'll make sure. Oh, there we go. I forgot to set this to aux two. Aux two. I knew that didn't sound right. So, angle in horizon. I want air mode to work, and then in rate mode. I want air mode to work. So there we go. That should be set up and ready to go. And I want to test the direction. That's the last thing I really need to test, I think, before I try and fly it. What direction is that turning? So these are turning the traditional direction. So the picture on the box is just wrong. These are not set up by default to be reversed in any way. I would call it almost ready to fly out of the box. We had to change the radio settings. We had to set the arming switches. Other than that, it was pretty much ready to fly. So there we go, the next step is to actually put props on it and fly it, and it is good to go at that point. Unfortunately, it's raining right now, and it's gonna be raining all day, so I'm not gonna get to fly it today, so I'm gonna put this together just so you can see what's in place for it, and we'll fly it as soon as possible. If you found this useful, and I'm sure somebody learned something about the radio, in this case, I know I did, give it a like and comment down below with how fast is this thing gonna be? Is it gonna be amazing or super amazing? That, that, those are my two expectations. Also, if there's anything I missed that you want to see covered, comment down below and I'll be glad to check it. At the moment, everything looks really, really nice. I'm really excited to get out. One thing I may have forgotten to mention is this actually supports 5S2. So I just happen to have gotten a couple of those batteries and we'll be testing that soon as well. So until next time, remember, yeah, my free sky doesn't enable these switches either, so I can't give them too hard of a time for that.